Help it. From haunted video games to sadistic kid shows, we count 10 creepy pastas from the darkest corners of the internet. Number 10. Been Drowned. This popular creepypasta is about a corrupt, seemingly haunted copy of Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 64. The player receives a used copy of the game from an old man and upon booting up the existing save file discovers a series of strange unscripted events. Songs play in reverse, statues appear at random, and the player gets teleported without warning to various areas of the game. It turns out the creepy occurrences are communications from a boy named Ben, who drowned. In the game, cryptic messages play like, Ben is getting lonely. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? And you shouldn't have done that. As if Majora's Mask needed to be any creepier. Accounts on Ben's death vary, but some believe he drowned at camp with a copy of his favorite game, Majora's Mask, in his pocket. Check out the chilling game footage. Ben Drowned demands to be experienced firsthand. Number 9. Candle Cove. In this story, members of an internet forum discuss a children's show called Candle Cove, which they remember watching back in the 70s. The show was about a little girl who imagined she was friends with pirates. In one memorable episode, every character spent the whole time screaming. The little girl just stood there, moaning and crying as though she'd been forced to endure this for an hour. As more memories were exchanged, it became clear that this was a deeply sinister show. The main villain was a skeletal character known only as the Skin Taker. His mouth slid back and forth instead of opening and closing, and when the little girl asked about it, the Skin Taker replied it was to grind your skin. One commenter asked his mother if she remembered a low-budget kid show called Candle Cove. She said yes, and that he would recognize regularly asked for permission to watch it. When he got it, he turned the television to static and sat, staring blankly for 30 minutes. And if you say that concept was stolen from the poltergeist, the skin taker will come after you and ban you from his deviant art. Number 8. The Rake. In 2003, documents detailing the existence of a mysterious creature were destroyed. It was a cover-up, but the public sightings grew more frequent. In 2006, nearly two dozen documents were unearthed, dating from the present day all the way back to the 12th century. The documents describe numerous sightings of a creature known only as the Rake. In one terrifying account, a couple woke up in the middle of the night. With a gasp, the man grabbed his wife after spotting a big hairless dog-like creature seated at the foot of their bed. While the couple adjusted to the darkness, the creature sprang up, crouching less than a foot from the husband's face. Its cold eyes stared at him for a while, then it dashed towards their children's bedrooms. The terrified couple chased it, but they were too late. They found their daughter in her bedroom, mutilated and close to death. Her final words were, He is the rake. Number 7. SCP Foundation The Secure, Contain, and Protect Foundation is a shady organization that first emerged in 2007. On its staff are doctors, researchers, and agents, and their aim is to research and catalog strange creatures and objects known as SCPs. The Foundation's goal is to prevent SCPs from reaching the outside world. Well, that, and in the name of successful scientific research, scientists often perform sadistic experiments on death row inmates. But before you wet your britches and get all judgy, if you can think of a cheaper alternative to lab monkeys, I'd like to hear it. Budgetary issues aside, the creature that started it all was SCP-173, a statue-like monstrosity with short limbs and a bloody face. The creature must constantly be monitored. It's been determined that it can't move on direct eyesight. However, once eye contact's been broken, this lethal creature immediately kills its victim by breaking their neck. Let's see, the notes I've been given here say, don't approach at any cost. Seems like sound advice. Number 6. 1999. In the story 1999, a Canadian blogger tries to uncover the chilling truth behind a mysterious TV station he watched in 1999. He fears the station was ran by a local predator, and his investigation reveals that the man behind the channel attempted to lure children to his house to sacrifice them. The deranged man would torture and kill children in his bear costume and called himself Mr. Bear. Some disturbing shows ran between 4 and 9 p.m. One low-budget show called Booby featured live-action hand characters on a tabletop. During an episode called Playing With Scissors, the main character, Booby, appeared to be holding a pair of scissors. Meanwhile, another smaller hand jerked violently in the background, as if being forcibly held in the air. Booby repeatedly stabbed the smaller hand with the scissors while a muffled child's scream could be heard. The scissors eventually made a disturbing crunching sound, indicating that Booby had struck bone. Police eventually intervened and the sadistic station was shut down. Number 5 NormalPornForNormalPeople.com is a website whose tagline claims it's dedicated to the eradication of abnormal sexuality. On the surface, it seems like a pretty normal text-based site. However, users discovered hidden links to various distressing videos. One video shows a man creepily feeding his dog a peanut butter sandwich for half an hour. 
Another features an obese mime quietly sobbing. Stumps.avi is a 5 minute video of a legless man trying to break dance in a dirty kitchen. He collapses in exhaustion and begs for rest, but the off screen person screams for him to continue. The video Privacy.avi shows a woman masturbating on a mattress while a legless man walks around on his hands wearing a goblin mask. In the background, a strange animal is seen darting past the doorway. The 18 minute video Useless.avi is the most confronting video. It shows a woman tied down with her mouth taped shut. After seven eerily uneventful minutes, a man in a suit appears and the animal from the previous video enters. The animal is an abused chimpanzee that had its hair shaved and skin painted red. The man closes the door behind him, leaving the bound woman alone with the animal. The starved chimp sniffs the woman out and mauls her life, feasting on her for seven minutes. Normal porn for normal people. Number four. Mr. Widemouth is unique because he's extremely small and has been described as Furby-like in appearance. In the story, Mr. Widemouth appeared to the author, who was bedridden with sickness and then only five years old. Mr. Widemouth initially hung around reading kids' books and keeping him company, but soon he wanted new ways to play together. He suggested playing pretend trampoline, which is where children who believe hard enough jump out of a window only to bounce back light as a feather. The boy considered it, but decided not to due to his lingering doubts. Mr. Widemouth then suggested a nice game of knife juggling, at which point the boy thought, Okay, I'm starting to think I need some new friends. This talking Furby's fucking crazy. One day, Mr. Widemouth mentioned a path behind the kid's home that apparently led somewhere really cool. Sort of like how strangers' cars are always full of really cool candy. Fortunately, the family relocated soon after, and the boy wisely left Mr. Widemouth behind, not telling him about the move. As an adult, the narrator revisited his childhood home. It had been so long, he began to think that all that Mr. Widemouth stuff was just a sick kid's overactive imagination. For a laugh, he decided to walk down that path that Mr. Widemouth once told him about, and was horrified to discover that it led to a cemetery with many kids' tombstones. Number 3 the Russian Sleep Experiment. Enjoy staying up for days at a time. You may want to reconsider. In the late 1940s, Russian researchers subjected five unlucky prisoners to an experiment involving prolonged sleep deprivation. The prisoners were given a particular gas and promised freedom if they could stay awake for 30 days. Initially, things went pretty well, but paranoia soon set in. On the ninth day, the prisoners ran around the chamber screaming. One screamed so loudly that he tore his vocal cords. Others smeared their books with feces and plastered the pages over the glass porthole so they couldn't be observed. Three days passed with no sounds inside the chamber. Fearing the worst, the researchers addressed the subjects via intercom. Finally, a prisoner said, We no longer wish to be freed. Two days later, the researchers terminated the experiment. They flushed the gas from the chamber in preparation for the subject's release. The subject screamed as if fearing for their lives and begged for the gas to be turned back on. Armed soldiers entered the chamber and discovered one subject dead, lying in six inches of bloody water. Chunks of his flesh had been torn off and stuffed into the floor drain. Each subject had been severely mutilated. They had ripped open their own abdomens, disemboweling themselves with their bare hands. Some had even devoured their own flesh. The four surviving prisoners seemed terrified of falling asleep and refused to leave the chamber. During a scuffle, one suffered a ruptured spleen and flailed about for three minutes before dying. Two others willingly underwent surgery without sedation and fell into fits of hysterical laughter on the operating table. When asked why they were so desperate for the gas, each said, I must remain awake. The researchers wished to terminate the experiment, but they were overruled by their commanding officer, who demanded that three of the researchers join the inmates. Horrified, the chief researcher pulled out a pistol and shot the commanding officer. Then he shot each of the remaining test subjects, putting an end to the Russian sleep experiment. Reportedly, the final subject's last words were so nearly free. Number 2 Slenderman Everyone and his dog knows Slenderman. He's easily the most popular creepypasta on this list with his own games and merchandise. Slenderman's appearance varies from source to source, adding to his mysterious nature, but he chiefly appears as a gaunt, unnaturally tall man with long arms and a blank, featureless face. He wears a black suit and often appears as an obscured figure in the peripheries of old pictures. His imposing height, reportedly between 8 and 15 feet, strikes fear into adults because it reduces them to a childlike stature. Slenderman stalks its victims, usually children or those who have endured personal tragedy with dogged persistence. It's invisible most of the time and only reveals itself at will or if caught in the lens of a camera. Its long, drawn-out stalking causes slender sickness, an affliction causing severe paranoia, nosebleeds, nightmares, and hallucinations. 
For reasons unknown, Slenderman's preferred victims are children, and he often masquerades as a friendly figure to gain his victim's trust. Because of this, many Slenderman sightings occur at playgrounds. Slenderman is extremely malevolent and likes dispatching prey by impaling them on tree branches. It's also been known to hang its victims' bagged organs in trees. Disturbingly, there have been real-life cases of impressionable kids stabbing and starting fires because they are obsessed with Slenderman. Number 1. Jeff the Killer Jeff was an innocent but fragile boy who moved into a new house with his family. One day, on his way to a neighborhood kid's party, three punk teenagers attacked him and his brother. Though innocent and fragile, Jeff protected himself, leaving his attackers laying in the street with broken wrists and knife wounds. Jeff had always been angry inside, and the encounter taught him how fun it could be to inflict pain on others. A few nights later, Jeff's mother heard crying coming from the bathroom. When she went to investigate, she found Jeff carving a permanent smile into his cheeks. He also sliced out his eyelids so he could never sleep. Seeing that her son had gone insane, Jeff's mother ran to wake up her husband, but she suddenly froze. She saw Jeff in the doorway, clutching a knife. The last words she heard were, Mommy, you lied. Jeff immediately killed the rest of his family. Now he hides in closets, whispering go to sleep to his victims before slaughtering everyone in the household. His face is smooth and pale, and he's easily distinguished by his huge insane grin and lidless eyes. Go to sleep. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.